Hello, this is Sanjay Sane from Sane's Academy. In this video, you are going to see inferencing using a stream lead app. After being built a powerful machine learning model for a specific problem, we need to showcase the inferencing of it. We are going to see the inferencing with concrete mixtures problem. Let's see that. The source of our data set is UCI datasets repository. The name of the data set is concrete comprehensive strain. Here is the data set where you have more than some 1000 samples of cement mixtures with the cement blast furnace quantities and the comprehensive strength of that particular mixture. So over here, comprehensive strength is going to be dependent variable or I can say label or response variable. Here I have converted that data set into CSV by shortening the column names. Considering this data set, I have built one regressor. Uh, to be more specific, let me tell you, I have built the stacking regressor. I have stored the stacking regressor, the best stacking regressor in the form of job lib. This is a serialized form of the model. The file job lib is now going to get loaded into our Streamlit application. So to start with, let's do the necessary imports and also let's load that particular best model object into our environment. So here comes that object. Let us run this all. Well, we have loaded this object now. We need to find out now on how many features and on which features the model has been built. Here it is. The model has been built on some eight features. Well, we need to make a provision in our interface to accept the inputs for all these particular features, namely cement, blast, fly, water, up to age, everything. And then we it's expected that we get the predicted strength of it. Well, for choosing the input widgets for your app, you, you have various different alternatives. You can have select boxes, you can have select slider, you can have the textual, you can have numerical inputs. Among these, let us choose something like slider. So slider is the input which accepts basically any numerical value it seems and our all the features are numerical. And we are going to specify minimum value, maximum value and the default value with the step of the slider and the label of the slider. Let's do it one by one. So let's start with cement. With cement, the st.slider function I am going to call the label minimum value, maximum value, the default value and the step. And let's continue with all other variables. Hence now we are able to accept inputs related to all the features. Let's save this file and try running it in our stream data. We have saved this file with the name infer1.py. For running this infer1.py, we require to have the command streamlit run and the file name. Let's press enter.
and we have the inputs but we don't have any calculations as we have not specified them only the thing over here is for age i had i had the the control the input widget as numerical input or number input that's why we see a different input widget for each actually after accepting the inputs we require to process them in the form the way dot predict function gets executed now the dot predict function accepts either a two dimensional numpy array or a pandas data frame over here we are going to create a pandas data frame with all the inputs from all these input widgets and then we are going to pass that pandas data frame into our dot predict function let's do that here as you see that the objects which are going to get created at the runtime are cement blast fly course etc the outputs from those objects we are going to capture in the pandas data frame df after the data frame has been created let's call the predict function over here we have called the predict function on the loaded object and what was that loaded object the loaded object was the same object which was the best model object when we actually fitted our best model as i had stated earlier you will also find this square bracket zero over here because basically we want to capture the object not in the form of array but in the form of a single number that's it having captured the prediction in the form of one single number object we are now going to get it written on the particular board or on the particular screen interface let's save this file and reexecute this as you see i have refreshed this and you see the predicted strength calculated over here now you can modify any of the value and you see the strength value gets changed as you find that this becomes completely uncomfortable with uh, this kind of layout so let's have a more friendly layout with some more options with stream view let's do that let's plan our layout in this way where we have three columns the app title in the middle top and the controls or the input which are distributed in these three columns let's do that so to begin with i have specified the app title over here and then the three columns as planned now the three column widths should be relative that is equally distributed that's why 0.3 0.3 0.3 have been specified in all we have nine things so let's have 3 plus 3 plus 3 so beginning with column number 1 now with column number 1 i will have the three widgets let's have the three widgets with column number 2 call 2 i have and i have these three indented accordingly and for column number 3 well these three with call 3 and then these all these things indented so in column number 3 we are going to have fine and age and the output let us save and refresh this so here we see a very friendly interface where you know you can actually change the different values and literally see your output the links of the resources used in this video have been given in the description box of this video feel free to access them and try them on your own 
and also feel free to try the code on any other data set of your choice. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, please don't forget to click the like button and for more updates from me, do subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Thank you.